freeing trapped bodies while there's still time. As an incomplete ceasefire dissolves hour by hour, locals in the village of Srifa brought in heavy equipment to look for the dead. Five houses once stood on this hillside, but two weeks ago, before anyone had a chance to leave, Israeli bombs fell while the families inside were sleeping. Red Cross volunteers have come to help extract the corpses. It's the first chance they've had to get beneath the rubble. How many bodies do you think, or do you understand, are caught in the rubble in this area around Srifa? We think there are as many as 25 just in this area here. One of the bodies they're looking for belongs to the son of Mahmoud Naji. The boys were sitting here at the house when the plane dropped its bombs. Five young men. Mahmoud says despite what's already happened, he doesn't want to leave his land. I ask him how many people are left in the town. You can't count them right now because the fighters are still here. Some people left, but the fighters are here still. Evidence of Hezbollah fighters and their arsenal are on display as you drive through the bombed out valley. This was once perhaps a Hezbollah firing point. Artillery shells are scattered around, fighters kit and boxes of ammunition. As we drive through these villages, it's mostly men of fighting age who emerge from their houses. A lot has changed in 24 hours. Yesterday the roads north were full of fleeing families taking their chances with a lull in the fighting, determined to escape after weeks of shelling. In Bintish Bale, civilians trapped on the front line emerged from their basements for the first time. The Red Cross says its efforts to provide humanitarian aid there were blocked today when Israel refused their convoy's safe passage. But now it feels that moment to provide relief and evacuate those who want to leave but can't has passed. There's a strong sense of foreboding along these roads. Most of the villages that we've passed through are fairly much deserted. The exodus that we've seen now appears to be over, at least in this area. Those who remain now have decided to stay and fight. Ali Saad. But Ali not Shifan. quite. Uh, Ali Saad sits waiting in a car in the back alleys of Shrifa. In the past, he said he'd refused to leave despite the shelling, but now he's been persuaded he must. I'm trying to go with the help of the Red Cross to my house in Beirut, but they've left me in the car. I'm not sure why. I want to go. As shelling sounds out across the valley, the old man condemns what he regards as the enemy. Nobody has committed crimes like the Israelis. Why does the world protect them? Why do those dogs protect them? Israel has had a devastating effect from the air. As it moves to a full ground operation, no one can be sure how this will end. Kylie Morris, Channel 4 News, Shrifa.